This is Kreskin, and of course you know me as the amazing Kreskin, and you're wondering, I'm sure, what's on my mind. I talked to this in the past, and I wanted to share this movie, because when the movie came out some years ago, I did not have the opportunity of really embracing it, except with some local TV interviews or in different parts of the country. I'm talking about a movie that you may enjoy looking in on. I'm going to give you some background on the great Buck Howard. Now, it ring a bell in your mind? The reason it should is that the gentleman who plays me in the movie is John Malkovich. Not that my name ever comes up in the movie, no. It is a character, but the character can be no other person than yours truly. The person who wrote the movie, Sean McKinley, was my road manager for a time being in the past, I should say. John Malkovich, Colin Hanks is in it, uh, Emily Blues, Steve Zahn, and Tom Hanks has a bit role near the end. The Tom Hanks has in the movie his son, who is uh, Colin Hanks, who plays the role of my road manager. You see, the story begins when I start expressing my feelings about it, I get so wrapped up in it because I can't believe how they captured various essence of my work. And yet this is not a biography. It's not meant to be a biography. It's meant to be a story about a character who basically has the character of yours truly, Kreskin. The uh, handshake becomes my signature in the movie. I'll talk to you a little about that later on. But talk about a signature. You got to see the movie. You got to see it. I just saw it for a third time a few weeks ago. And boy, it blows my mind when I see that, that uh, John Malkovich is playing me and playing me physiologically in a very exaggerated, dramatic way. The basic of the story is that uh, uh, Kreskin, not, not Kreskin, I'm talking about myself now, John Malkovich has lost his road manager and is seeking a new road manager. That character turns out to be played by Collins Hanks. Colin Hank, who may not seem to have the strongest role in the movie, but he certainly has a pivotal role as to be coming in to a movie, a story line in which, as far as his character is concerned, he had no ambitions of ever becoming involved in. As a matter of fact, his father, who was played by, would you not be dramatic to expect this, by uh, Tom Hanks, is very critical of his working for this great Buck Howard because he said, I spent all this damn money, all this money, sending you to law school. And look at the role. You're getting a role in show business. And uh, Colin, who's a young man, naive, not experienced, has no idea what show business is like. But obviously, I, I don't want to mislead you, did not seem too thrilled with the idea of going into law. And this is how the story is involved. Because uh, Malkovich, Buck Howard, is not an easy person to work with. He's very demanding, very exacting, because when you see him work, you find out he is something of a perfectionist. And when I say perfectionist, a real perfectionist. The general reviews regarding uh, Colin is that his character was not that strong. But you want to know something, considering uh, working for a person who is a headliner in the story, you cannot help but see a person overshadowed by the key character, who is Buck Howard. There's even a scene in which uh, he shows the road manager, Colin, shows a, an effect, a sleight of, hand, sleight of hand effect, excuse me, by dropping a coin. In the coin drop, I have to give credit to way it's photographed, is rather dramatic. Coin things and sleight of hand coins 
It's not very dramatic uh, in, a, in a movie and what have you, but somehow it comes across. But let me talk to you now about the real critical change in this movie. And that movie comes across almost the moment it starts because there's no other person you can think of when you're watching the movie, The Great Buck Howard, but that of uh, yours truly. You see, John Malkovich decided, decided to use as the key signature calling card of the, the character, he decided to use my handshake. And when you see the movie, you will not be able to think of anyone else but my handshake, because it's not a mild handshake. It is, should I say, 10 times or at minimum six times more extravagant, exaggerated than uh, you normally see me do in person. As a matter of fact, I have got to let you in on a side factor of the movie, which very few people talk about. The staff, great staff to work with, great people. Uh, I got to know a number of them, although I was not through much of the filming of the movie, but they had me there in the beginning and part way through because they wanted to express and have me see how things were going, which I felt were going very well. It was not a biography. It was not my life story, but they captured in this Buck Howard character that is yours truly. The handshake, not only is it dramatic, but I can tell you because I was there a few days after it happened, many of the crew came up to me and said, Creskin, dear God in heaven, we went through almost hell a few days ago. I said, well, the movie isn't traumatic or what have you. They said, no, no, we got to explain to you what happened. The star of the movie, and you know who the star of the movie is, John Malkovich, decided to spend three days shaking hands with everybody he saw, everybody he met, and the crew who we would see six, seven times a day through many scenes. And the way he got to them was he went over to shake hands with them and practically dislocated their sockets. The way they said his head, you, you got to see the movie. You have to see the movie because from the very first few minutes, you're going to think, oh my God, how is this going to happen in the whole film? He had three days of dislocated, well choreographed teaching people. And incidentally, Carson was, Johnny Carson, with whom they mentioned frequently because I did it's a schedule as 61 shows, which they've done all the time. Actually, it's some 88 shows, but the earlier shows were not on tape and not accessible. So I lived with the 61 shows, and they mentioned that he's doing 61 shows with Johnny Carson. After all, he is playing an offshoot of yours truly, and I thank him for keeping the record straight. There is a piano introduction in the movie, very moving and very de a dedicated song to yours truly, and then becomes a factor that becomes a major feature in the movie itself. And I've got to tell you folks, I mean this sincerely, seriously, and I give this as credit to the production staff of the movie and the writing of the movie. They use as one of the major features of the movie, even though you only see it two or at the most three times, they use my check chest. For those of you not familiar, I can explain in a minute and a half. I turn my check over to a committee from the audience whom I've never met before. This is whether the show is in a theater of 6,000 people, in a nightclub, or in one of the scenes in, the, in Las Vegas where I was returning to a theater there, or it could be a private party in someone's home, 30, 40, 60 people. I gather 
four or five people from the audience whom I have never met before. Unless it's a return engagement. Never met them before. I hand them my check and now I am escorted from the uh, private home, from the theater, from the rented hall, from the large theater, one of the off-Broadway theaters that I performed in, and I go outside and I'm guarded by two people, one of whom was on the committee of four or five people. The other is someone working for the theater who is there or working for the organization that booked me, who is there to guard the fact that I do not see or hear what's going on. While I'm out of here, my check is hidden anywhere, anywhere in the entire complex of the auditorium or the gigantic living room. Sometimes I'll let them say, take the whole house and use that as the criteria. Or if it's outdoors, in the stadium which I'm working, you heard me, it's hidden anywhere in that limited area, the confines. And when they've hidden it, one of the members of the committee comes out to get us. The committee comes in, my escorts came in, and they verify that not only did they not see what took place, but Creskin saw nothing. The bottom line is, if, and I do not ask any questions, I only ask a member of the committee to concentrate on what they've done. I don't ask any questions that are yes or no or anything else. But if I do not physically locate my check, my fee, I return it, it goes back to the organization that booked me. The entire sum goes back and the show is for free. In one of the scenes that is mentioned and has been mentioned in the past in interviews about me, I lost, I've lost nine times in one particular appearance, and this included all the monies, because even the, the money that was taken by the people who booked me, that is included. I lost $51,000. But I've only failed nine times out of hundreds and hundreds of occasions, including one where I went up to a man in the audience and kept being self-conscious, finally asked him to open his mouth, there was no check. I came back later on and I said, does that have anything to do with the roof of your mouth? And, and he reached his mouth, took out his upper plates and handed me my check. So this became a very dramatic scene and one of the downsides used in the movie. Because in the movie, as I failed, I, I plunged into deep depression. Sometime later, I collapsed on the floor. And it became a very, it's extremely well acted, extremely well dramatized, and it became a super tragedy in my life that haunted me for some time after. Until, by the way, one of the most dramatic scenes I have ever seen relating to my work. Because, you know, here I had found my scenes in, 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 in money boxes, in the braziers of a person in the audience and so forth. When I went to look for someone in the audience, the question came up, is he gay, what have you. No, I usually did not fiddle around with people's bodies. When I looked for a check, I just finally decided where it was. But the uh, problem has been taken advantage of in my way of exercising my career. Uh, in the movie, uh, uh, after, after Carson leaves The Tonight Show, Jay Leno uh, takes over. I hadn't been booked by him up, up until that point in the movie. And uh, uh, finally, uh, I ex make, give a negative expression towards Jay Leno because, of course, in the storyline, as in truth situation, I was not booked by him. There is a scene that's extremely, one of the most dramatic scenes in the movie. And that is a scene of mass hypnosis in which there are hundreds of people I believe they say maybe eight or nine hundred people, but I, uh, I can tell you something, that it is as dramatic as if I were really doing it as I've done in my demonstrations in which I express the fact that I don't believe it's a hypnotic trance, I believe it is the power of suggestion, what have you. But at the same time, when you see this scene, it is one of the most dramatic scenes that you'll ever see in movie making. I. Uh, 
dropped in one of my uh, programs that I was doing in the movie, coins on the floor, and got so vi violent, uh, John Malkovich threw the coins up in the air and the papers as well. I don't react that violently, but it certainly looked for real, because the way Malkovich handled it, that's the way it was taking place. Incidentally, the rumors are in the movie that I was using a hearing aid of some kind, and uh, the truth of the matter is, I never have in my career, but in the movie it was an ingenious idea. They actually had two doctors come forward and look into my ear to see if there was a hearing aid there. The major introduction regarding the mass hypnosis had me collapsing, not because of the failure I succeeded, but something in the story I'm not going to tell you ahead of time. You'll see it if you get to watch the movie. Regis and other others, and I did more films with Regis than you can imagine. But uh, Jay Leno and, and, and Regis became, and, and, and Jay Leno, who I, I, I told you about, canceled one of the stories in the movie. But we got along after that, and uh, the earpiece was ingenious when you see the devices they used to check to see if I've ever used, and this was the climax of the show, in which my check was part of the show. And I found it, and it became, had, a, had a tremendous impact on the audience. They left out my audience readings where I tune in on the thoughts of members of the audience, and some of my card work, uh, which delete, were deleted from the final version of the film. But the bottom line is that the film was a masterpiece, and I want to tell you, I have a great feeling about the movie, because they captured in the character, the great Buck Howard, the energy that's been part of my career. And it had a spark of joy, it had a spark of satire, and I'll tell you, if you get to see the movie, I hope you will, you're not going to forget it.